Hi, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm. And did you know that most aphids are born pregnant? Now this is a fascinating biological fact about such a common garden pest that most of us probably already know. And if it's your first time dealing with them, you're in for a treat. Aphids are these kind of gross colony forming, sap sucking insects that find the fastest growing parts of your plants up by the flowers or the fast growing shoots and literally kind of suck the life out of your plants. Now, your first question might be, how do I get rid of them? And frankly, they're not all that hard to kill. Uh, there are lots of solutions, including insecticidal soap or diatomaceous earth or other common garden solutions that work really well getting rid of aphids. The problem is they reproduce so quickly that they kind of overwhelm those measures. And that's where the them being born pregnant comes into this. I want to give you some interesting biological facts about aphids today that sort of steer away from those approaches of either spraying pesticides or trying to exclude them from your garden. Those really don't work when it comes to aphids. Let's talk a little more, more about their biology. So what do I mean when I say that many aphids are born pregnant? And what I'm saying is when they find a favorable position and an aphid sticks its sap sucker into the plant, like a little mosquito, it starts sucking up that sap and it doesn't want to interrupt that process for anything. So it doesn't go around flying around and mating. It actually just creates a clone. It pushes out a little baby of itself, genetically identical to the mother, which sticks down right behind it and sticks its stylus into the plant as well, and then starts pumping out babies of its own. This is how aphids manage to colonize so quickly. And you'll see them all lined up one behind the other, just sucking on your plant. But many of those are just clones of the mothers. And that's how they manage to quickly overwhelm your plant when there's lots of sap available. It is only when they begin to run out of food or the plant becomes a little bit more stressed, the colony becomes more crowded, that they begin to develop winged aphids that go off and do the flying around and mating thing, laying eggs on other plants and spreading throughout the environment. So you have these two specialized functions. You have the asexual generation that lives on the plant, puts out live young that are just clones of the mothers and sort of overwhelms that plants with their numbers. And then you have the winged ones that do the job of spreading these, these insects uh, very efficiently throughout the entire environment. So you're up against the best of two strategies here. Uh, they actually have a ton of predators. There's a, there's a biological term called aphidophagy, which means that there's like ladybird beetles and hoverflies and a whole bunch of other predators that more or less make their living eating aphids. So it's not like they don't have a huge amount of enemies. It's just that they have a reproductive strategy that they hope will keep them one step ahead of those predators. A second cool biological fact about aphids is that they spread themselves over wide distances using wind currents to jump from country to country even. So I sometimes hear from people, oh, I got aphids from a plant that I bought from the store and then suddenly it was in my garden. But the fact is that during the growing season, aphids are literally raining down from the skies. I saw one study here and I'll throw in probably a graphic from that study where there's this island off the coast of Sweden where they were tracking where the aphids were coming in from and those aphids were coming in from as far away as Germany, Holland and even as far as France. That's when they just fly up, get carried by a wind current and just rain down in a different environment. So this question of whether you can exclude aphids from your garden, I mean I've already said they're gonna be pretty hard to wipe out in terms of traditional methods but this idea of I can exclude them, keep them out of my garden. The only way that that makes any sense at all is if you're talking about house plants, where you kind of quarantine your plants before you put them into the house. And because there are no natural predators inside of a house or uh, a tight environment, exclusion may make some sense. But in most outdoor environments, the idea that you got it from your neighbor, that you got it from the store, uh, they're raining from the sky. So that exclusion is not really a valid strategy. Well, those first two facts should give you pause in your fight against aphids. They are tough competitors, but this third fact I'm going to give you is more upbeat, if not a little more gruesome. The aphidious wasp is my favorite aphid parasitoid or enemy. And what they do is they go around the garden laying their eggs inside of aphids and then their larvae go and eat the aphids from the inside out, mummifying them into these brown uh, exoskeletons as they do the job, eventually cutting themselves a little opening on the outside of the aphid and then emerging to go and do that job themselves. A single aphidious adult can lay eggs in about 300 aphids over their lifetime, meaning 
that there's 300 more aphidias wasps around the garden, or potentially so, and they quickly overwhelm your population of aphids. They are good hunters and they, wide over, they, they search over a wide area to find more aphid colonies. So this is a real good answer, is that uh, even though aphids have a very, very strong reproductive and distribution strategy, that their enemies are even more clever in some cases. And all you really have to do is wait for those guys to show up or introduce them into your garden, which is something you can do in a mix of aphidious wasp from biological pest companies. Now, um, in terms of what do you do in the garden, if you, instead of just waiting, well, what you can do is you can plant biological diversity in your garden. Having plants with small flowers like from the carrot family helps to benefit those aphidious wasps and give them host plants around your garden uh, but having a wide diversity of plants around your garden in general supports all sorts of predators like hoverflies and ladybugs and so on so that is the strategy that actually can work I wanted to quickly address a fourth biological fact or question about aphids is whether ant colonies create aphid problems in your garden uh, and it is true that some ant populations will develop these relationships with aphids where they kind of farm them, move them out on different plants, uh, feed off of their honeydew and sort of tend to the aphid colonies. Uh, but this is not how most of your problems with aphids happen in the garden. So it's not a simple relationship of wipe out the ants and you won't have aphid problems. In fact, most of the aphids that are distributed through the garden just get there on their own. So it might be kind of wasted effort going after the ants and you may be causing other problems along the way. If the ants aren't causing you an issue, leave them be, I would say. Uh, now, at the end of all of this, you may be asking, what's the right approach to aphids? Just leave everything alone? Not exactly. I would say it's a targeted approach. I mean, it's always about using common sense. Watch the problem, see where it's developing on your plants. If it gets to the point where you're like, boy, I'm gonna lose that plant, or it's severely affecting the health of that plant, or I'm gonna lose the use of that plant if it's an edible plant, and it's all like a cabbage that's covered with aphids, then what you do is apply a targeted approach. And things like insecticidal soap, which don't persist long in the environment and do a quite a good job of wiping out aphids is a good way to go. Some people can get rid of them just with a simple spray of water getting and dislodging that colony while they're waiting for the predators to show up. What I would steer clear of are the heavy duty pesticides that will both wipe out the populations of aphids temporarily, but they're fast reproducing and they'll be right back, but it will also wipe out the predator populations and the parasitoids that will help to eventually balance out those populations of aphids. The whole goal here is not to have zero aphids in your garden, impossible, it's to have a managed population of aphids controlled by biological predators. All right, that's all I had to say on the topic. Hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, please drop that into the questions below the video. I'll see what I can do to help.